You good? I am good. All right. Welcome to Truth, Beer, and Podsequences, a bonus episode. We had producer Brian uh, come over to us and let us know that he had something special for us to try. So we're going to take a couple quick minutes, a little mini episode, or maybe I'll cut this into the main episode. just depends on how it goes. Okay. We have a sample of Third Eye Brewing's Groovy Baby, which is an English mild, I believe he said. Yeah. It is 3.8%, and I haven't even given this a smell yet. Have you had any kind of exposure? I, t- I, I took a whiff. Okay, what'd you uh, think? It, it, the, there was a roasty characteristic Ooh, to it. Yeah. Smells um, smells right right in line with it style. It smells amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to, to give it a try. So, Marco, why don't you go ahead and dig into a taste so the english mild is a style that isn't super heavily prevalent in the cincinnati craft beer uh, scene i guess you could say i'm not sure if it's because it's a i don't know if it's a difficult style to make or if it's just something that doesn't sell well but i know that third eye puts out incredible beers regardless of the style so because you just gave this a taste what uh what are your thoughts that's fantastic that is fantastic. Now, we don't rate beers here on the show. We, we do that on purpose. Uh, it's because uh, I'm a brewer in the industry, and uh, I don't need your shit. Uh, and I just drink the beer, and I know that if something is not a style that I prefer, I'm not going to rate it because it doesn't hit my yeah, preferences. Yeah, and that's the other thing is I'm fair. I'm, hits- I, I feel like I, I would be fair to everybody, right? Yeah. And it's like, a, you know, I... I choose things based off of certain parameters right like i mean certainly dietary restrictions and the other thing is that Mm -hmm. you know uh, because of those things i I can only drink certain styles if i have a taste of something outside of that that's fine uh i can appreciate every beer for what it is um you know I, i and if something was actually technically flawed from a from a uh a flaw standpoint Mm -hmm. um I wouldn't tell you about it, uh, meaning you, the 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 listeners. Oh. I would, I would um, communicate that to to brewery representatives. So here here's a question on that. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate that you would go directly to the brewery in kind of more of a private conversation rather than publicly saying, "Holy crap, this beer is." Disgusting, and I thought it'd be this, blah blah, blah whatever. Which this That's beer not is even not. It. This, it's it's not. But, if it's it's if it's. Um, well, but, if but my question to you to kind of finish kind of the, yeah, yeah, the slight ahead. train of thought there is if you try a beer, and I'm just going to, this is 100% made up in my head. This is not based off of anything from anywhere, but like let's say you ordered a, I don't know, like a, a Pilsner from somewhere, something that you would expect to be, cl- again, okay, just, just purely speculation. Sure. Like you expect it to be kind of clear, that clear yellow color, whatever. And you were handed something that was hazy. That, that was hazy. That Super was hazy. more more of a brown color than like that clear golden color. You and, would still, and had a and had a sour tinge sure, to it. Sure, sure, something completely not on the same spectrum that the beer should be. Yeah, you're the kind of person that would go to the brewery directly to say, "Hey, is this how it's supposed to be?" Before just purely saying it on social media, and in that's my public. that would be my ask. Is like, okay, is this yeah. what you were and that's, going for? And that's for? fair, and that is 100 percent fair, and that's what I I feel like any any beer drinker should do. If you're at a tap room and you get a beer that's not what you expect to see or smell from the style you ordered, ask the bartender and check with them and just be like, "Hey, just kind of curious." I ordered this. Is this what, what the brewery intended it to be? Okay, cool. Or if you're at a bottle shop or you're somewhere else that's not the brewery, reach out to them maybe on social, like in a DM, like kind it's, of privately make sure, like, hey, is this yeah, your interpretation of the style versus yeah versus your expectation of the style? Because they they can be two completely different things, and they can both be correct. Now. I definitely want to clarify that that is not what we're saying about this English right. mild from Third Eye. <laughs> right. It is a 3.8%. It is it's the so most good. beautiful dark amber color. The scent is just rich and malty and 
the taste is 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 crisp and I, I mean, this is exactly what I would expect an English mild to taste like. I am just presenting the hypothetical. Right. If you order a West Coast and the glass that you're given is, you can't see through it and it's slightly like pink in color and whatever. Do you call them out on social media or do you go no, to them? No, hell you know, no. In and neither direct. should any of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so let's say that scenario. Actually, My God, this is good. Is so Not good. to interrupt you, but Jesus, no, Third Eye do. does it right all the time. So good. It is so good. And so what I would say is let's say I was handed a beer that, you know, was described as West Coast and it was hazy and it um, had a, I don't know, pink tinge to mm. it. Uh a tint to it, excuse me. Uh, I would first ask myself, do I like the taste? Yes. Mm-hmm. Second, if I don't like the taste, why? Is it just because it's not true to style? Or is it because there's a a flaw in the beer? Is it infected? If it's not infected and I don't like it just because of the flavor, then... I will move on to something else Mm -hmm. because I'm going to assume at that point that this brewery thought they hit what they were going for. Sure. And it's just not my thing. Sure. And not every beer is my thing and needs to be your thing. Right. And to kind of use your example, uh, the, the West Coast that's hazy and slightly pink in color, whatever, maybe it is that brewery's interpretation of a West Coast IPA with strawberries. And that lends to that hazy, pinkish hue. Yeah. If they don't let you know that up front and all you see is a, a beer called West Coast IPA, you don't you know what your expectations are for what that should look like and taste like. That does not mean that that's what the brewery or what the, the brewers, well, what they are trying to present for their interpretation or their variation on the style, and the other, which is fine. And, and again, I would say, do I like the taste? Exactly. And if I like the exactly. taste, I'll order it again. Sure, Look, when sure. I, when I pull up to a brewery and, and sit at the bar or, or whatever it is, I'm not judging a BJCP contest. You right. know, I am there to, to find something that I like to where I'm going to have a beer or two or, you know, whatever, whatever that, that, uh, situation is and look for something that I enjoy. And right. You're, you, you're looking at, so you, you have the style, <coughs> excuse me, you have the style that's listed on, on the board as more of a guideline to what you're going to get. Yeah. But once you have that beer handed to you, you use your own opinions and taste profile for lack of a better term yeah. on yes this says that it's again we're going to use that same west coast example that again hypothetical this doesn't apply to anything that we've that we've had tonight you're going to say that if you're handed a you know west coast that's hazy and slightly pink in color versus a clear one do i like it yeah well yeah it's a good beer it's yeah. not what i expected but it's a good beer so i'm not going to say anything about it yeah and versus getting something that's you know like third eyes mild uh english mild groovy baby that is spot on what the style should be you know what you're expecting you get exactly what you're expecting there's n- no convers. I, I I don't want to say no conversation to be had about it because it's a fucking fantastic beer. Get this over if you're up there. Yeah, and over the course of the past, let's say three weeks, I've had a hazy sour pilsner that was not that was not uh, advertised as a uh, hazy sour pilsner. It was just advertised as a pilsner. Was it good? Uh, I didn't care well, for it because, the of, sours, the, because yeah. of the sour. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, and then I had a Kolsch that tasted great, and you couldn't see through it. And so it wasn't clear. Uh, but I had three of those of the Kolsch. Yeah. Because it tasted good. Sure. Uh, so it, maybe it, it wasn't been, exactly it, to it, the style you expected to see. I just don't understand. But under- it tasted good, so I fuck didn't, it, drink I, it. I didn't know why someone would make a Kolsch that, that wasn't clear, but... I don't care. It tasted good. So I'm going to drink it. And But um, from from a response standpoint, uh, just because 
just because I'm, I'm a I'm a brewer, just because I'm I'm in Cincinnati as as um, as, as one of those mm-hmm. a brewer and then a bartender. And look, I'm not going to always communicate back any of those things. Um, in some cases, I think I should. Mm-hmm. In other cases, it's just what they're doing, and that's fine. If and if mo- I really felt like if I really felt like uh, they needed to be made aware of something immediately because of some flaw, I would have I would have communicated that somehow, some way. But I wouldn't have just blasted it out on you know Elon Musk Twitter. Sure, uh, sure. I would have I would have been much more. Uh, a, discreet and communicated that directly somehow you know sure. via through uh whether it be a, a personal connection that i know and i don't have personal connections with everybody i i i, I don't and um but, but or maybe it's through you know asking questions and 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 finding out who you know, I should relay that information to. And sometimes it's just the bartender. Right. 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 And sometimes it's just them. And, you know, you, you talk to them and say, it, it just come about it. Come about it in a, a, um, a mature, a mature, responsible way. Right. You don't exactly. You need to be an I mean, a-hole my, on, on my, social media. Right. My story about that that I believe I've, I've said one or, tw- you know, one or two times here on the podcast is... I had I got a six pack of beers from like a Kro- I forget if it was Kroger or local bottle shop but somewhere that had a local brewery's beer got a six pack of it wasn't really familiar with the brewery at all it was one of those hey first time that I want to try them I know that they're local let's give their beer a try it was an IPA when and it was still very early in my kind of craft beer exposure poured it in and there were those like the, the like the protein chunks that sometimes come from the bottom of the keg when they're kegging stuff or maybe it's sat on the shelf for a little too long nothing harmful nothing that affects the it's flavor not harmful. of the beer i don't love Correct. it though it looks off putting so the first thing that i did was i didn't go to to the craft beer club you know facebook page that i'm part of or just my own personal stuff and just start you know, tagging the brewery and, hey, look at this, and there's like two inches of sediment on the bottom, and what the hell is this? I knew that I was still new to learning about all this, so I messaged them directly, privately, saying, just curious, I know that there are unfiltered styles. Is that what this is, or is this just something, you know, is it still okay for us to drink this? It tastes fine, it just looks... It just looks gross for, you know, lack of a better term. When you see those little, like, cylindrical protein particles, it just doesn't look appealing. But I'm I'm not going to call them out in public for something that is a perfectly natural part of the fermentation process or the brewing process or, you know, just what happens when a specific style of beer sits on the shelf. Let me ask them in private, like, hey... Is this okay? Is this good? I don't want to get sick. I just I just want to make sure that everything's fine. I'm about to get sick because it's nine to one on the <laughs> Reds <laughs> on our sports game. ball podcast. On, but no, they, and the they fifth, going into the fifth inning. Oh, I'm going to be sick. This so is not this, good. this is awful. So not good. They are so but this, bad. But this specific brewery contact me back right away saying, "Hey, no, that's that's not how it should look." However. Those are just proteins that are part of the of the process. You probably got a six pack that was near the end of the canning process, so the bottom of the kegs. It's perfectly fine to drink, but we understand that it looks it doesn't look good. Yeah. If you want to bring the rest of what you have back up here, we'll gladly exchange it for something else. And that's all you have to do. If you get a beer that isn't what you think it should be. Just ask the bartender about it. Maybe it's an unfiltered style that you're not expecting to be unfiltered, so it is going to be a little hazy. It is going to be a little, a little chunky, a little thick, a thicker girl than what you think you're going to be getting. <laughs> Marco just had to stop drinking when I said that. But if there is something that maybe isn't quite right that they just don't realize is happening, I do not know if any brewery in the Cincinnati area that would not try to make it right for you. So don't blast people on social media if you get a beer that's not what you think it's supposed to be. 
ask questions. Ask about the style. It is maybe the brewery's interpretation on the style, which is perfectly fine and leads to some amazing beer. Right. And if it's just not your thing, just be like, okay, I, I understand. It's just not something I can drink. And nine times out of ten, that brewery, that bartender, whatever, is probably going to offer you something else to replace it with. Or if it is exactly what the brewery is going for, maybe it's just not your style, which right. is which is fine. Not totally everyone okay. likes everything, but my God, yep. this English mild so good is perfectly to style, in my opinion. It's maybe other people so who good. are who are a little more uh, snobbish in English miles. No, I'm calling you out. I don't know why why anyone would think that this is not. A perfect English mild, but oh, third eye, no third eye brewing. I know that's why I was. Yeah, third kind, eye. Kind of a joke. Third eye. Third eye. Uh, groovy Brink baby. And uh, Rheingeist. Um, now I don't think third eyes canning their English mild. I don't believe so. I think it's just on draft. But uh, you can usually get around the holiday time. Uh, Rheingeist English mild, and then I believe Brink's English milds year round. I believe so as well. And then, um, but definitely check out the breweries to make sure because again, right. their taps and what they offer on draft and packaging tend to change so frequently. If it's not one of their main flagships, <clears throat> it's it's hard to keep track of. But oh, it's, it's man, a, if you get up to third tie anytime soon, third eye, yeah, and you see Groovy Baby is still up on that board. I don't care what kind of style beer you like. This is absolutely delicious. Get you some. 3.8%. So you can crush this one. You can get this as your last beer of the night and taper off to where you're okay to get home because we want you to get home safe so you can continue to listen to our show. That's right. And (laughs) uh, it's a super, super flavorful Oh, my God. uh, It's so good. It's rich but not heavy. Yeah, really, really, really good. Beautiful, beautiful beer. Shout out to everyone at Third Eye who was involved in this. You guys did a brilliant job. Thank you so, so much to producer Brian for sharing this with us. Yep. And thank you to BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery for giving us the space to sit and hang out and try absolutely fantastic beers alongside a birthday party. That's right. Yeah. Was there anything else that... uh, that you wanted to, to touch on in this in this little bonus episode that we're that no, we're doing? No, no, I've already said it. I mean, the Reds right. are bad. The Reds are bad. This is this is a sports ball podcast in disguise. I'm not a fan of the baseballs just because I like I don't, baseball. I do. It's, I just it's just more fun when the team's better. Yeah, I like watching baseball highlights, but watching an entire game again. See, unless, here's the thing: if I, I hate to cut you off there, Julia, but mm. if I it's if, fine. If I start watching a baseball game, I get hooked. If I, I never start watching a baseball game, I don't need to watch it. You know, I now that you mention that, I tend to do the same thing. If I'm not watching it, I have no interest. It's one of those whatever. If I start watching it, well, I guess I'll 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 I'll, I'll quantify that much like Sonder Stories does with their tap with their like top five list. Yeah, top I'm gonna, five. I'm gonna quantify this. If I start watching a baseball game when something kind of exciting is happening, a double, a triple, a home run, an incredible you know, double play between you know, getting it out at third base and, out, and, and an out at first base, I will keep watching it. If nothing's really happening, if it's between innings, if it's, you know, just the pitcher standing there for 10 minutes waiting to throw the first pitch or, you know, the whatever pitch to the ball player. It doesn't grab me, yeah. but but no, I I, I will I, I do watch the games if I turn it on or I happen to see it and something some activity is happening. Right. Just baseball has enough downtime in between every play, yeah, to where you have to turn your attention to it at just the right moment. Yeah, I get you. To I mean, grab my attention. Every, and there's nothing wrong with, with, with baseball, yeah, but I mean, it's just not my Every batter's got to take three practice swings and touch each end of the plate and mm-hmm. then, you know, point his bat out to the end and then, I have you know, swing it around. I have like, piece of my, of my cleats. Every little yeah. cleat of my cleats has to be tapped by, every, by the ball every or pitcher by the bat. Has to flick his glove and, you know, adjust his cup and, oh my you know, God, do the, his the spit. The cup adjustments. And then, 
do his spit and then you know give his you know yes to the to the pitch or the no to the so, pitch and then so here's a sports so you're more into baseball than I am yeah, a little bit what is it okay and and this is I've never had to wear a cup in any in any of the sports balls okay. that I've ever played. It, are they really that like so uncomfortable that you have to adjust them every few seconds? Because I feel like in even in football, even in like not really soccer, that tends to be fairly fast. But in baseball, I feel like they are always adjusting their crotch, which I have to assume is more the cup than their actual junk. But are they really that uncomfortable? Do they really shift whatever that much to where they, the the Joey Votto a couple games ago they had him mic'd up during that that mic'd up segment of the show, he must have been adjusting himself no fewer than like twenty times. Is that necessary? Like, can't they re? Can can someone not? make a cup that you don't have to adjust all the time? I think time? you asked the right question. That's okay. the right question. Okay. okay. Is can you make a cup that is not as uncomfortable as that all you the, have to be adjusting all it the cups every are. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the answer. <laughs> and and I think a lot of players choose to to not use them in many oh, different really? I didn't in know many different that. sports. Okay. And uh, I just assume that it's bad, one of those it's a bad idea. Right. I was gonna say I would like why that's sensitive stuff. Why wouldn't you want that protected? Right. But yeah. if, 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 and again, I have no experience with them. I've never, I don't have the right equipment to have anyone say you need to wear one of these during the sports balls. It looks like they're incredibly uncomfortable just based on the amount of adjustments that are made anytime any sport. Well, it's also ball not necessarily it. just the cup, it's also okay. the, the, apparatus that you have to put it in to to then to then wear it so okay wait so i thought that the jock strap that's the like official word for them correct and you slide the cup into the jock strap oh so those are two separate things two separate i was things. using that as like the entire apparatus like i was rolling no. that all into one whole thing no. so even so is it the cup that's uncomfortable or the jockey strap or is it all is it is just everything uncomfortable and it doesn't matter and it all needs to be reinvented some marco is is, is is just holding his Correct. head going elon musk why am i explaining this, this to her i bet elon musk could uh you know figure that Put one out a couple million into funding to make an actual comfortable jock strap yep. for the guys yep. yeah yep. yeah support the guys come on make athletes comfortable right isn't that what we should be you doing know, here that could be actually the ha support the guys <laughs> support the guys <laughs> the guys my god because it has been years that i have watched different sports ball events sports mm -hmm. puck events to you know those of you who only listen to shift beers or the newport report and they're always adjusting and it's like why yeah why why can't someone and okay so speaking from a woman's perspective women don't have cups they don't have have jockey straps anything like that but one part of some women's attire is a thong which until you're used to it is a very weird feeling uh, yeah piece of, it of, is, of material to wear so it was so you're 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 familiar with uh, with where I'm going with this no one? I just a lot I have you a lot of women <laughs> You know, <laughs> you have a lot of women in your household, so therefore, by proxy, you understand. But it's 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 something to wear for women when they wear a thong. After wearing it a couple of times, you get used to it to where it's just comfortable. Right. I feel like yeah. the jock strap. These guys are professionals. They wear these all the time, yet they never get used to it. It's never comfortable to them. Why not? Why hasn't someone put some money and effort and time into making a male protective piece of equipment right. that they don't have to adjust every two seconds? Because I'm sorry, when you're doing an interview and you always see the guy just like yeah. adjusting, adjusting, I don't want to be looking at well, that. I think part of it, too, is with baseball. Um, they have too much time on their hands. Well, I mean, they've got a little bit of that and everyone <laughs> has their own you know, habits and nervous tics, but... Um, why are we in, uh, 
uh, long pants. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's I get true. that they're sliding. I get that they're sliding you and gotta protect, all this other yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I mean, is that is that the most appropriate uniform? I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I feel like so I played softball in like late grade school, the beginning parts of high school, and I had a scar on my lower leg for a couple years from sliding into from sliding. home plate home yeah. home plate. Uh gravel on the on the field all that kind of stuff yeah. so i can definitely understand why if you're playing a sport to where sliding is going to happen you would want that extra protection but these are professional like we're talking about the the mlb specifically right, right now there, there's not uh there are you know, there's no gravel there's no, there gravel. Are no tiny rocks or glass or broken bottles that no. they might be sliding over no. so i don't know why they have to wear long pants although i will say baseball seems to be one of the few sports other than like curling that you don't have to be in tip top shape to perform in that's a whole you still nother, have to be that's a whole nother podcast shape, but it it's is a whole nother podcast it's a whole nother bonus episode for the truth beer and consequences sports ball podcast yeah it's a whole nother episode uh, yeah marco and i definitely enjoy the sports ball we love talking about the sports ball but there, it's definitely a deep dive, deeper than what we need to get into for for this bonus episode, which right. was supposed to be all about Third Eye Brewing's English Mild Groovy Baby. Which, my God, it, I don't want to finish my glass because then it's going to be gone, and unless I go up to Third Eye, I'm not going to have well, any more. I finished mine, you so did. mine is gone. <laughs> so, but yeah, the Reds suck right now. Um, they wear long pants to protect their their delicate calves and lower leg area from yeah. any type of abrasion while they're playing. Someone, maybe Elon Musk, since he apparently has a ton of funds that he knows not what to do with, yeah. maybe he should invest in a more comfortable male protective garment. I just think everything that they're wearing when it gets to like 90 degrees outside. It's uncomfortable. And all these stadiums are open uh, except for a very few sure, where they're in sure. domes and air conditioned. Sure. Like you've got the sun beating down on you. It's 90 degrees and it's almost like you have a three-piece suit on. Right. Now I will I will say that I think the the jerseys they're typically buttoned down right for the most part so you have the space in between the buttons to where you get a you might get a little extra air it's just flow. dumb we have better fabrics than there that. there is I, i'm not arguing with you on that i think that there is the potential for more airflow between the buttons than if you just had like a straight jersey like sure. soccer players yeah. football players that kind yeah. of thing where yeah. they don't have extra padding under there for the most but the part, soccer but the, the soccer shirts their their kits are more, more more meshy yeah and more moisture wicking True. than probably True. those you know baseball who knows they're probably still well, made but out at of the freaking same time, wool but at the same time you look at a lot of the baseball players for let's just say it's a three hour game they could also we'll take off all generous. the chains so they, they don't yes. have six pounds of chains <laughs> while they're trying I, did to always, run. I did always wonder why that was allowed like isn't that a if nothing else a safety hazard someone could grab that and then you're just your throat slipped because of the chains you're wearing around yeah, your neck. Your I don't know. I have your Cuban I links. <laughs> Cuban links. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, here's hoping that in the last few innings of this game, the Reds will pull off something spectacular. Sure. I doubt it. But yeah. you not, never know. You, you never, know. never know. You never know. There we go. Other than that, Third Eye Brewing, Groovy Baby, they're English mild. It is absolutely amazing it is everything the style is supposed to be and then some thank you so much to producer brian and to bc's bod lodge montgomery for sharing this one with us yes get up to third eye brewing get yourself a pint or two or three of these as well as some amazing food third eye yeah, makes very good their kitchen is phenomenal very good food and thank you so much for hanging out with us with the uh with this week's sports ball and beer Truth Beer Pod Sequences bonus episode. Thanks, everyone. Check us out at truthbeerpod.com and truth at truthbeerpod on all your favorite social media platforms. And we'll see you again soon. Mm-hmm.